Hello and welcome to the AI show. I'm Cassie Brevue. Uh, Seth is on vacation, so I'm filling in. So I had to improvise with some AI show music. Um, and I'm excited to be here today. We're going to be talking about IoT Edge. We're going to be talking about a fun new device called the Azure Percept. And we're also going to be looking at different IoT type solutions that you can use with Azure. Um, and I have somebody special here with me today. Uh, her name is B. She is a new cloud advocate on our team. So welcome, B. Um, so why don't you give us a little intro to you? Thank you, Cassie. Super happy to be here. As you said, I work for Microsoft as a dev advocate. Um, I'm actually a boomerang, meaning I used to work for Microsoft before, and then I came back just because I like it so much. Uh, I used to work for the WPF and Silverlight teams on the data binding team. Uh, and uh, between Microsoft and Microsoft, I went to grad school and I, and I uh, um, studied machine learning. And I also own my own company, my own consulting company. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be here with you, Kathy. <laughs> That's awesome. We are so excited to have you here, to have your expertise as we go through and talk about the Azure Percept. And I think if you watched last week, you got a little intro to me, but I'll just give another quick one. I'm a cloud advocate on the AI team as well and focusing um, on, well, cloud obviously and AI. And then I also play with XR and my background is actually full stack.net software engineer that realized I really liked AI and data and playing with all kinds of tech. So that's my background. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be playing with today. So this is the Azure Percept. Um, and if you haven't played with IoT much, we'll talk a little bit about the basics of IoT as well. Um, but let me go over this particular um, device that we're gonna be looking at. So it comes in this adorable box. I mean, come on, adorable, anyways. And then when I'm looking for I IoT devices, I look for how cute they are first, and then I look for specs, just kidding. Uh, but anyway, so it comes with this board. So like if you've used Raspberry Pi, let's see. Um, that's this is the dev board. It's not a Raspberry Pi, but just to kind of give you an example of what's in there. Um, the Azure Eye, which is my camera, and then I also have the Azure Ear, which are my microphones. So what this allows me to do is easily deploy and build AI solutions on the cloud with or without code. And we're going to look at how to do that. So really cool device. Um, let me switch over to this here. Cool. Um, so the first thing we're going to talk a little bit about are the specs on the device. So here is a data sheet. Um, you can see it has an 8020 mount, which let me go back. To, here we go. This is the one I want. Um, it has an 8020 mount. So let me show you what that is. That is this little mount here. And this allows you to mount it however you want. So it comes on this bar, um, but you can buy different configurations so you can mount it how you want. So if you look up 8020 mounts. I have a question for you, Cassie. Yeah. Did the 8020 mount come in the box or did you buy it separately? It came in the box. So it actually came like just like this. Um, and yeah, I, didn't, I, haven't, I haven't actually even taken it off. But I think it would be, it, it's useful in the way where if you've done any IoT stuff and you try to think about, well, you need a project box. So this comes with your project box, right? Um, it's all Wi-Fi enabled. So the only thing it needs is power and everything connects to the board. Um, but you can also um, then mount it however you want. Like I saw a really cool blog post on somebody that did a remote control car, and I think they were using maybe something more like this L bracket. Um, so you can loosen it and then take these individual pieces off and then mount them however you need and then mount that on to wherever you want to do your machine learning um, algorithms or whatever you want it to point it at, or maybe you want to put it on a remote control car. Um, so that is 8020 mounts. Um, and then if you take a look, we can see um, the OS. And I thought the specs were on here for the board. We have our security specs. I think, oh yeah, here's our processor. And yeah, so if you want to, I'll put paste this in the chat so you can take a look at more detail um, of the Oh, I'm not logged in, so I can't paste it in the chat. We'll get links to you um, after the show. But if you Google Azure Percept and you go into the docs, that is the data sheet that has all the kind of intricate specs that you'll probably be looking for. Um, and if you're new to IoT, I want to show you some of the devices that I have outside of this and also kind of give you a starting point 
um, because I remember when IoT was first trying to get popular and I was like, I want to know more about this. Um, and I'm, I'm self-taught in most of what I do. And so I'm very much like, I just need a project. I need a goal to kind of learn a little bit more. And there's this thing called Azure Boxes, or not Azure Boxes, Hacker Boxes, um, that look like this. And it's a monthly subscription. I don't even know if it still exists because I did this a while ago. It might. I think it does. Um, but basically, let me show you what kind of comes in here. It will come with a project and it will come with different devices. So actually, this one is a tic-tac-toe that I built. It's not connected, but uh, um, you can see <laughs> it would light up. Obviously, it's not connected to like a board or any power right now, but it would light up and you would put on the little um, pads to turn on the different lights. Um, that was one project that I did. There did those come with instructions, Cassie? Did you get like a little box of instructions and the pieces or how did that work? Yes, fantastic question. So basically, I don't know what it does now, so I can tell you what it used to do. Um, basically, you'd get this box and you'd have an assortment of, of things in it and you would go to instructables.com and then they would have different projects for you to do. So but by following those um, and then Googling anything I didn't know, Google, Bing with Google, or however Seth says that, you know what I meant. Google with Bing. Google with Bing, there we go. I would Google with Bing and then learn about the different pieces. So it's not necessarily, um, it, I think it's beginner friendly if you know how to code already. If you know how to code and you, and you kind of are good at problem solving and figure things out, then I think it's really good because it'll have those instructable things that you can go to. In fact, let's go look at it and see if it's still up. Let's see what Hackerboxes looks like today. It is still there. Yeah, so monthly, monthly subscriptions. And they used to have a link directly to Instructables. And I'm not seeing it now, so maybe it's not there. But either way, you can find different things that you'd want to build. Oh, oh, look, they have like actual, now you can do individual ones. So when I was doing it, it was very much like you didn't know what you were going to get each month, um, kind of like a surprise. And then they would have the Instructables on different things that you could build with it. And then there was a community around it too, so people might build other things and then write out the instructions. So it looks like now they might have specific boxes that you can buy with instructions. So it's a really good way to get started with IoT if you want to learn more. That's how I got started. And I like it because it's kind of like a self-study. Oh, they got fancier boxes now too. Sweet. Own a starter workshop. So yeah, they've, they've, they've grown since I used it. But yeah, so that's kind of some different things. So in this one, I have a Raspberry Pi, which I mentioned earlier. So this is the board. So if you were to look at the board um, inside that one, it would look similar to this. I don't think it is a Raspberry Pi. Oh, since I have a green screen, it's that's really funny. It's kind of, but yeah. And then this one has a little camera connected too. So if you look, you have like your GPIO. So this is how you connect to your breadboard, breadboard and you can um, do then all kinds of things. The kind of like hello world for IoT is blinking a light on a breadboard which there is that for the Azure Percept, they have um, instructions on how to do that kind of hello world. There are other things that you get in this one. Although I guess I probably shouldn't go too far into this, but like all kinds of stuff. Like I have some RFID. So I end up, I have so much random things now. Like whenever I kind of get an idea of something I wanna build, um, I go look through my stock. But now I get to play with the Azure Percept, which made, like takes out all the work. So like if you were intimidated by any of that, like don't worry, you don't have to do any of that to like build stuff. I um, mean, some people are probably like more excited after seeing something like that. Like me, I'd be like, I want to play with that. Um, but then sometimes it's like, eh, I don't really wanna know the details. I don't wanna build my own stuff. I don't wanna play with the bedboard. I just wanna be able to deploy um, production models simply and quickly and have like a out of the box solution. That's what the Azure Percept is gonna do. And so Cassie, can people get the Azure Percept today? Or is that something because you work for Microsoft, you have access to it? I mean, I got early access, but you can buy it now. Um, let me see. I think there's, yeah, there's a buy now link in the docs. So you can go here. You can buy the Azure Percept. Um, it integrates with the IoT Hub, which we're going to talk about um, a little bit. You can also integrate other boards with the IoT Hub. Um, so you can see the Azure Percept DK, which is my, uh, my board and my camera. So that would be switch here. So this board and this camera come in with it. And then you can optionally add the microphone, which is this one here. So if I scroll down, you can see that you can add that. So I think, you know, overall, this is going to be a bit pricier, um, but you're paying for kind of the convenience, which you'll see um, when we start.
building. So it's definitely decide what's right for you and your project type thing. Um, but yeah. And as we're talking, if you have any questions on any of the stuff, please put them in the chat. Um, I love to hear what people are thinking and what kind of questions or what they want to hear more about too. So if we go back to the overview, let's go to the docs because I want to show you a little bit about the setup for this. So if you've done any IoT stuff, you know, you have to go find an image, you, you image your SD card, you put it in your, your um, device and you have to kind of do all that setup. You have to decide, you know, if you're going to use, um, well, most Raspbian is the common one for uh, Raspberry Pi. And um, I haven't done much with Arduino, so I can't, I can't speak to that one. But anyways, you kind of have that setup stuff. So you don't have to do that with this one. It's actually in a wizard. So here's the unbox and assemble. Let's go here. Um, let me find the CP experience. Let's see, does this have, one of these has like some really nice, okay, here. So this screenshot, essentially, when you connect all these together, so as you can see, like I have it connected to power here, and then I have um, my ear connected to my board here, and then I have my camera connected to, oops, this is my camera, this is my audio. So, Sorry, I'm not used to having this like multi-camera, so there we go. So now you can see how those are all connected. The only thing it's plugged into is power. So when I open it up, all I have to do is, is connect it all together. It seems like Kath Cassie's video froze. Cassie, can you hear us? Oh, I think I'm back. You're back. I think okay. I'm back. I was wondering oh. if the glitch was in your side or my side. Oh, I'm back. Yay. Sorry, back. I don't know what happened there. Okay, I don't know where I cut out. Can you hear me okay now? Yes? All good. Oh, now, now B's, okay, awesome. I'm not sure where I cut out, so I'll just jump into the wizard. I think that's where I cut out was when I was talking about the the wizard that you got. So when you're you go showing, to set up this the, device. You're showing the pieces. You're showing different pieces when you cut oh, out. Oh, that cut out way before. So <laughs> yeah. it cut out when I was talking about how to connect the device yeah. Okay. All right. So um, to connect the device, um, it's really simple. It's just USB. You hook up your audio and your mic to your board here. Mic, mic audio, or mic video. And then that's connected to the um, board here. And then that all that needs is power. So when you open this up, that's all you have to do to get to this point to have it all set up. And then once you do that, you go over to um, your Wi-Fi, you're gonna connect to the device, kind of like you would set up an Alexa device if you've ever done that. Um, and then you a wizard will pop up and it's literally like a wizard setup. So you go through, um, you get the welcome, um, you connect it to your internet, uh, you enter the device, you connect to your Azure account um, and it's gonna automatically register it with your IoT hub. So this is how you would follow that within here. Keep going down. Um, you'll see that when it's connected to the Azure IoT Hub, it'll say deployment complete. You can use an existing one if you're already an IoT Hub person and you already have other devices, you can connect it to an existing one or you can set up a new one. And then um, it's all set up. And so once that's all set up, you go over to the portal, which looks like this. So the Azure Percept Studio um, has it's kind of, I think, what makes it really easy to deploy things on this because I can use the pre-built models in it, which we're going to look. I can build models. I can look at my devices here. Um, so I click into this. I can see this would be the device that I set up. And I can use pre-built custom vision and cognitive services, which I'll talk about a little bit in more detail later if you don't know what that is. Um, but there's also just pre-built models available on it. So it comes default with a object detection model already on it. So if we go to the object detection model, um, you can see, so this is my my office. If I go over here, you can see now there's two of me. 
Um, and you can see that I'm a person of varying amounts, depending on. You're almost a person. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost 85% <laughs> accuracy. And like I can pull other objects. So this is our default cognitive service. So you can see it's a cell phone. Um, what else do I have here? I have a pen. Uh, no, it's a person. It's, it's a person. Well, is it not? Oh, it thinks it's scissors. So this is an example of like a generic um, computer vision model that you can create in Azure. Um, can do a lot for you, but sometimes you need to do more detailed things. And so you need to create a custom vision module. module. So I want to show you another thing on this pre-built model. Um, if I were to hold up a bird picture, well, seeing cell phone, come on. There, see, it knows it's a bird, but it does not know it's a blue jay. And so there might be times where I want to perhaps build a model that can recognize different species of birds. I love to watch the birds and I have a bird feeder. Um, and there's actually a learn module that I wrote on how to uh, recognize birds um, or how to, yeah, how to recognize different species of birds using custom vision. And that's an example of where something out of the box like um, the this particular um, vision model isn't necessarily gonna work. And so you might have other specialized things that you need to be able to recognize um, like I think about for like commercialized solutions, like if you have an assembly line and you wanted to put something like this on an assembly line, um, you have specific things that you probably want to train a model to understand. So you can do that without code using custom vision. So if I go to my, let's, let's take a look. So I have one custom vision project that I created already that I want to show you. Um, so this is my bird classification. We're gonna create another custom vision one. I'm just gonna show you this one and then we'll go back and we'll create a custom vision model as well. Um, we're gonna do different images though, just so you can kind of see the full process of building a cognitive service. And actually I'm gonna back up a little bit. I think I wanna talk a little bit more about cognitive services before I jump into that so that you kind of have an idea of what those are. They've been around for a while, so if you, um, if you've been around Azure, you're probably very familiar with them, so I won't go into too much detail. But basically, they're pre-built models that allow you to do AI without doing custom model development. Um, and so we have a variety of them. Let's see if I can find the right page here. And they keep adding to them, and they keep getting more sophisticated. They're so cool. Um, but so we have things like Q&A Maker, where you can take a FAQ page and feed it in, and it will give you a voice assistant that can answer the questions from your FAQ page. There's text analytics, there's speech, speech to text, um, speech recognition, uh, and then the vision one. So the one that comes pre-built on it, I believe is this custom vision one. That's the one that's just there when um, you deploy to the device as kind of like the default uh, service. And then custom vision is what we're gonna look at, which is another, like I said, pre-built one. And how it works is actually really interesting. It's using something called transfer learning. Um, and if you're not familiar with that, it takes a pre-built model and then it adds layers to that neural network to create a customized solution based on what you want. So that's custom vision. That's what we're gonna be looking at. And those are cognitive service. Any questions on the cognitive services so far? Oh, I just, hello, I see Ivana's here. Ravine from Germany, awesome. I'm, I'm just catching up on the chat now. I realize I'm like, ask me questions and then I forgot to look the chat. Um, my, me and my kids know what custom vision is. Vision is it's called the why. <laughs> Cause we see all, that's why, right? We know and see everything, it's all you need. <laughs> um, okay, so no questions on custom vision it looks like yet. Okay, cool. So I am gonna go back to, oh, I didn't talk about the other IoT boards. I'm gonna do this before we jump into custom vision. So as I was saying with the IoT hub, you can register different devices. <laughs> she goes, thank you, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, so if you're going to be using the IoT hub, you can use a lot of the, the, the IoT hub features. Um, 
or in cloud features with other boards. So you can like take a look and see all of the different boards that are supported that you could use and register just like you would register this one, except for that I believe that it's not gonna be like a wizard. It's gonna be more going through the Azure portal and setting up your different devices in the IoT Hub. So I just wanted to point this out that um, we're gonna be talking about IoT Hub and you can use those with other boards as well. Cassie, we have a really good question in the chat. Um, uh, how do I find pre-built models for cognitive services? Oh, where? Oh, okay, where yeah. Find? <laughs> where do I find them? So if you go to the portal, um, I'm gonna just open up a new tab. And then I'm gonna have too many tabs open and we're not gonna be able to find anything. It's gonna be fun. Okay, so if you go to portal.azure.com and you log in and you go to create a resource, and you go into AI and machine learning, a lot of these you're gonna see are our custom or our cognitive services right here. So you would go here and you would create a resource and that's how you would have access to these pre-built models. A lot of them have free tiers. And if you're new to Azure, I think you get like a credit as well. So you can go in here and play um, with it um, and kind of get a feel for it and understand it a little bit, which is nice. And then based on the type of model that pre-built model that you wanna use, is how you would choose which service to create. Um, and so those actually set up an endpoint that you can use everywhere. Uh, so if I go to, I have my custom vision set up. Let's go back to, Azure. okay. So I have a custom vision resource that I created right here. So when you go and you create a custom vision, um, resource, this is what it looks like. And it, it gives you keys and endpoints. So it, it's not gonna show you it cause it's grayed out right now for, so you can't steal my endpoint, but basically right here, there's an endpoint um, that you would grab and then you'd grab your key and then you could just do API calls and then you can integrate that into your, your app or um, your IOT solution or whatever you're building. Yeah, and one thing that it's important to clarify, I know you already mentioned that, but that's just, and I've mentioned it again, is that you can use cognitive, cognitive services without uh, Percept, right? So those are two independent things. They, they go well together, but you don't necessarily need Percept to use cognitive services. You could just use your, build your own model, your, your own app. Exactly. And so it's cool because Percept makes it easy to integrate them without having to build um, the, the solution. Um, but there's you can do it with like, maybe I have a web app and I wanna integrate some cognitive service or some AI into that, or you know, an in-house solution at enterprise, and you want to be able to add something in there. So there's a lot, a lot you can do with cognitive service. It's actually insane how much you can do without code now with AI. And like, just a side note about like Power Platform. If you haven't played with Power Platform, all of these cognitive services are built into like Power Platform now. And so I've built some stuff that um, for document classification using no code that with Power Platform workflows and cognitive services and then deployed it to an endpoint. And I've built it the hard way with, with code, like with C Sharp and Python and all of that. And it almost felt like cheating. It was like, it was like this can't be. So what I say when you're thinking about building machine learning models um, and if you're like, which one do I use? Because that can also be hard. Then you're like, okay, so I can just go create this here. I can build it into an existing application. I can create a Power App. I can deploy it to my Percept. I can deploy it to my own. Um, you know, why would I build my own models? Well, as you saw with just that object detection, I already have an issue where I want to know what my species of birds are. So it's not going to work. So there's always going to be those solutions that are going to need additional customizations or perhaps perhaps a vanilla model building where you actually build your own machine learning model. So I say go pre-built first because it's easier. And then if, if you come into something that doesn't work pre-built, that's when you go um, and start building custom, which if you think about like in software, I'm sure you've, you've uh, ran into this a lot, buy versus build, right? <laughs> do I buy a solution or do I build a solution? It's usually more fun to build, but not always cost effective, so. Yeah, it, that's so true. It's like, and we always think we can build it better, right? We're like, right. oh, you know, that doesn't, no. And then like we get into it and we're like, oh, this is gonna take a while. <laughs> Which ones? <laughs> it is so true. I think, I think every developer and, and business decision maker that we all go through that. So, so that's how you create um, the cognitive services and different reasons that you might use them. And so like, like I said, with custom vision, we are going to be customizing that pre-built model so I can still customize to what I need 
without having to um, build my own model. So I'm gonna close some of these out so I can find things. So I was looking at that. Yeah, we'll go over some of that stuff later. I'm gonna close this out. This is mainly so I can find things. Sorry, you have to. I know most people they'll have like tabs just going like across and they'll be like this big. And I'm like, how can you find anything? Like I need, I need to be able to see. Although if you go to vertical tabs, I don't know if um, you've used vertical tabs before, you can uh, flip them down and you can see better and then you can turn them off and go back up, which sometimes I do when I'm like, I have way too many. Do you ever use their vertical tabs? I do, yeah, actually yeah. I really like them. Yeah, I think they're great. Yeah, I do too. And I like that it's easy to flip between them so that if I um, like it, I, don't, I usually want it up here, but mm -hmm. like sometimes like I want to be able to see more of what's actually on there. Like this would actually yeah. probably help me find what I need versus clicking through. Maybe I should use these today. Although sometimes I want the screen space. I feel like right now I want the screen space. So, but it's very adaptable. Yeah. Okay, so we talked about setting up the device. We looked at the video stream that comes out. Um, these are some sample models, like I said, that come out directly that you can just use. Um, let's go back to, see, I still can't find anything. Even if I can see the tabs, it'll still be that way. Let's go back to this. Azure Percept Studio, that's what I want. So this is where you go to build all the things, yeah. We have another uh, question in the chat that you might want to address. Uh, what kind of actions we uh, can we trigger based on this? Uh, like, does it call back, is it call back, or is there any yes. questions? We were just talking yes. about that, weren't we? <laughs> we were, because I, I was also wondering that too, because it's like, it's great, but now how do I make an action from it? Exactly. Um, so if I go to my percept and I go view live telemetry, so you're not gonna see it, but you're gonna see that you're gonna, it sees that there's a person. So you can see the, that telemetry coming through. Um, and then the way that you can connect to this, so we can see this in our hub, but obviously we don't wanna only be able to see this in our hub. This is just an example of what the JSON looks like that will come back. Um, you can hook this up in the IoT hub. There are endpoints that you can use. So I'm gonna go over to my IoT hub and show you what this looks like a little bit. And I actually like this view better there. Let's go here. Um, so in here, I can set different, uh, you, you'll be able to see the device that we have registered. Where is this? IoT devices, I believe it's here. There's my, there's my device, okay. Um, and then from here, I can connect to uh, the streaming output through the SDK. So there's an SDK for the IoT Hub. And now I haven't done this yet. I was just reading the documents on this actually because I was like, how do I, I had the exact same question and B had the exact same question as how do I use this? And, and from what I've read, but I haven't tested yet, um, is that you can take the IoT Hub you can connect that either to job like analytics services, which we're going to look up a little bit later and actually try to hook it up if we have time. Um, that will then just collect all that telemetry data, kind of like app services. Like if you have a web app in Azure and you know how you can set up that um, blinking on what it's called. But you have the analytics and all the telemetry and you can query it. Uh, but then you can also use an SDK to hook into the IoT hub and then um, get notifications essentially, I think, is how it worked. I'm trying to find the doc now that we just had that explained it quite well. But yeah, so I haven't actually done that because I, I should say that I am, I have not used IoT Hub much at all. And um, I have just started using it now as I started been playing with this. So I'm learning with you all. So there's definitely things that I am, I'm not gonna know as we go, but I think that that's kind of the fun as we get to discover together. So let's look up the IoT Hub docs and see if I can find a little bit more information on this. We have oh, send telemetry. Is that maybe? Let's 
So here it says, and you'll be able to basic IoT application development workflow. So yeah, the Azure CLI to create the IoT hub and device. Then you use Azure IoT device SDK to run a simulated temperature. So this is simulation but it, um, and sending tele telemetry, but I, bu I believe that in this SDK is also how you would get that information. So if we take a look at the tutorials, we can connect a device, connect multiple component devices. Yeah. So I think I think that's how you do it. Really good question. Yeah. Um, any others that I missed? Well, uh, Basil clarified with a scenario, but it's exactly what we were thinking, right? Having something trigger uh, something else based yeah. on an image that shows up in the camera. Yeah. Exactly. Because if it's just going into the, the ether, that's probably not very useful, right? We want to be able to send an information. So yeah. Um, that would be something that you could build in, yeah. or you, I think even with some of the stream job analytics, um, let me see if I can find that one. Cause I think it was in here that I saw it. Let's see. Update, connect, tools. Oh, there's a dev pack here. Let's see what that has. Oh, so this is different um, developer tools, installers that you can use. Optional tools. Yeah, actually, that would be a good thing. Maybe next week. Maybe that's what we should do next week. Mm -hmm. We should look at um, connecting to this. Because I, I, if you didn't check in um, last week when we talked about it, this is a two-week series. So this is week one. Um, I probably should have said this in the intro and I didn't think about it. But this is week one where we are going over kind of just the basics of the device and um, different things that you can build with it with pre-built models. And then next week, I thought we would dive deeper into maybe some of these. Um, how do we connect and, and make decisions based on this or pre-built or I'm sorry, using custom models um, as well. And yeah. this is in preview though, so I should have given that caveat as well. So there things might might break, knock on wood. <laughs> but yeah, so that's this one. I think that would be a good one that we could look into in more detail next week. Because I think that's like an a logical next step after you set this up. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's should we go back to custom vision? Was there any other questions? Oh, Basil has another scenario. I'm actually really liking this scenario. So the first one was to trigger a smart lock to open um, if we show in front of the camera. Another one was detecting a traffic jam ahead and informing the drivers to change routes. Another one I was thinking, what I want is like to have this in my front door and tell me, you know, I get, a, I have like a motion detector, which goes bing, you know, every bling, bling you know, every time. Uh, but I want to know if it's a cat, if it's a person, if it's the UPS guy with a package, right? Uh, I would love to have like, that connected to I don't know to a speaker and my Sonos speaker or something like that, and have it have it speak you know to me oh the UPS guy is at the front door oh there's a stranger by the front door and all that kind of stuff um, yeah if other people have other scenarios I'd love to hear them because it's there's just so many possibilities for things that you can do with vision and then you know triggering something else mm -hmm. yeah no there is I have the uh, Nest Ring smart doorbell and there are some of those things built into it. Uh, it doesn't, I, so the thing about the face opening up the door, um, you can hold up a picture and I think it would work. I think it, like, it, I think there would have to be some sort of, you'd have to do something a little bit more than just an image classification, I think, because like, for example, I'm going to show you later when we play with the bird module on this, I'm, I'm not, I don't actually have live birds in front of me, but I'm going to show it a picture of a bird and it's going to know that it was, it's a blue jay or whatever bird it is. Right. Um, and so I think some of those where you're like, your, your face opens it up, I, I get a little worried about how it could be um, manipulated and what kind of safety features you would need to put in place in order to make sure that not anybody can get in your house by putting a picture up. But what the, the ring, or not the ring, the Nest um, doorbell has um, profiles. So you can set up profiles and so it'll say who was at the front door, it'll say a package was delivered. Um, it'll say unknown person at the front door. And from a safety perspective, it's really nice because I get notified and I can talk to it. 
Um, and it doesn't matter if you're home or not. You can be, you could be on the other side of the country or the world, or not really right now, but you know, in general, you could be far away and uh, you can still talk to the person um, and they don't know whether you're home or not. So there's like a lot of really cool features in smart doorbells um, that you can use out of the box, which is pretty cool. But building your own ones are always nice because then you can control whatever you want. You know, you're still kind of stuck in their platform and what they built and what they have for features, right? Um, so when you're going custom, you can add additional features like if you wanted to try some sort of um, image classification to unlock your door with a smart lock or... Um, I saw a, a demo a while ago. This was a while ago, probably like a year ago, uh, of um, kind of a, a device that uh, uses one-shot learning to to see your photo, uh, see you, and then see, you know, compare that with a database of people in the company that work in the company. And depending on your face, right, that it either unlocks the, the gate or, or it doesn't, right? And uh, mm -hmm. But one thing that they did as part of the demo was to hold a, a picture of an employee in front of the camera and that didn't work. Like the camera was able to detect, well, that's a, a photo of a person that's not a person and it didn't open the gate. So that was interesting, right? So that's what they that did, right? Yeah. yeah. So I wonder what how they do that. Like, I don't know how you would implement that because I, I think most of the time an image for like just vanilla custom or vanilla vision, computer vision. Right. I think it would recognize you and classify you. So I wonder how maybe like some sort of depth thing, like maybe there is an additional, like I think that has to be like a multi-model, a multi-model solution because there has to be like, who are you? And then like, are you a person? <laughs> like, right. It could be like recording several images, you know, nobody can stand still like perfectly like in a photo. So maybe they uh, detect several images and they see if the person moves a little and if there's no movement at all, then they're like, sorry, this is not you. This is a photo of you. Just an idea. I don't know. Yeah. There may be, yeah. There may be other, other techniques. And I, th I think it's a really cool solution. I know that for, I don't know if they still do, but before COVID, um, Delta had facial recognition at the gate to log in. So like if you have a passport, you they have your image um, and that must have been shared with Delta and they could classify who I was. So I didn't have to show an ID at the gate. They just did facial recognition and printed out my ticket. Nice. So there's, there's definitely a lot of ways that it's been using. I feel like there's some yeah. ethical things there, facial recognition and and ethics, um, things that should be considered. It could be a whole, um, I think another show, uh, yeah. because just because you can doesn't mean you should. And right. um, I think always thinking through kind of the ethics of what you're building and, and the, the repercussions of that are important too. So I think that it, there's like all these really cool things you could do. You think about, should we do them? And then how do we make them safe and secure? Is kind of like when you start thinking about those types of things. Yeah, so Basil is saying, is saying gesture recognition. Actually, I think that's one of the examples that is in the tutorials in the Percept is like holding a hand instead in, in front of the camera. So you can look at that one. I think it's like the vision, the basic vision. Oh, like if I hold my hand up right now, do we, should we yeah, look at it? I think it's like, uh, I know, I think they, it's like a tutorial uh, for like um, ident identifying whether your hand is open or closed. So you just- Oh, okay. Photos, uh, it's so, but it's custom vision. Yeah, it's custom vision. Oh, so it's custom record, vision. Okay. Yeah, you need to record a few images, train it, and but the, the tutorial is there, so that's that's very very easy for you to do. Like today, if you, I mean, you'd have to have the device, but you can look at the tutorial today. Yeah, that's cool. Um, awesome. Okay, so let's deploy this model, and then as it deploys, although I think it goes pretty quick, let me deploy this, and then we'll talk about how we built it. So when you build a custom vision model in the portal, which I will go to, after you create your resource, you can go to this portal um, in Azure. And if you go to the bird classification, so this is the model that I have. And to create this model, I just uploaded images. So I go add images um, and it opens up a local directory and I can upload a bunch and then save it and then you add the tag that it goes to which we'll sh i'll show you when we do the next one you click train and because this one takes a little while then when you train it you get this um nice iteration so like i have multiple trained models and i can see how it's performing with all these different um metrics i can get information about 
um, if there's an issue. So it's saying unbalanced data is detected. And what unbalanced data means is I don't have the same amount of images for all of my classes. And so it may overly predict one class over another if your data is too imbalanced. So it's giving you kind of this nice um, example. So I could balance these. There's other ways to programmatically ba balance them if you're building custom um, models. But with this one, uh, I think it probably does some of that, but it also just wants you to know because it, there is that imbalance. So with this particular model, I'm not seeing that it's creating a big issue, so I'm not overly concerned. But once I, I um, create this model in custom vision, I can go back to my, my hub, where to go? Maybe it was back here. We'll just click, there we go. Okay, so here we can see that um, any projects will show up and that this is the iteration and then I'll deploy the model. So this is literally gonna take that custom vision model that I created earlier and it's gonna deploy it to my device. Um, and then we'll be able to open up that same stream and it's now gonna be using a different model that I can use for classification. So that will take a minute to deploy. There, now it's good. And so now when I open my stream, it should say loading model. And that'll take a minute to load up and then we can test it out and see how it's working. So let me open up. I think it takes a minute to load too. Um, well, it does that. Let's go back over here um, and show you how I created the custom vision. So I go to the Azure Percepts. I can go to my vision project. So we can see that this is the vision project that I've already created. I want to add a new project. So we're going to do a cat v dog one. So we're going to do a cat or dog. Let's not do versus. We're together. I love cats and dogs. They don't need to be <laughs> going against each other, right? Um, and we're going to find out if my chihuahua oops, is a cat or a dog. So when we build this model, we're going to test it on my dog because I have a chihuahua. And if you don't know what those are, they're very tiny, fluffy dogs. I think she thinks she's a cat sometimes because she kind of acts like a cat, but she barks a lot. So she's a dog. We know she's a dog. But I want to know what AI thinks. I feel like it could solve this this problem for me of, of wondering. AI is always right. Right. <laughs> right. Always. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> so where is my? So I have the custom vision AI show. So this is that resource that I created. So when I showed you earlier, when you're like, how do I access these models? And I went into Azure, and I would have created that resource. This is where I can now select it in my percept, saying, okay, I've created this custom vision resource. That's the one I want to select. I'm gonna do an image classification. I'm gonna do a multi-class, so it's, it's a single tag per image. Um, and then I'm gonna optimize by accuracy and I'm gonna click create. Um, so now I'm gonna choose my IoT hub and the device. So if I had other devices on here, I could grab that. Um, there's also, I have not played with this and I don't really, I can't explain it well right now, um, but I just started looking at it. There's automatic image capture, and I think this allows you to create a data, a data set with your, um, with your actual module. Now, Custom Vision will uh, post back those images, and they stay in untagged, um, and then you can actually reuse them for later. So you can do that through Custom Vision outside of this, but it looks like it's giving you a UI and a way to um, capture images automatically and then go through and classify them in the vision portal, which is pretty cool. But I haven't played with it yet. Um, and I have a different way of capturing images I'm gonna show you. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. Um, so if, if I were to have captured images here, maybe we should just take one and like, just for fun. Should we capture one for fun? Like one image just to see how this part works. Oh, wrong one, let's grab this and percept. So if I say like take photo, I'm gonna get a, maybe I should, I'm gonna get a picture of a dog and take a photo on my phone so that we can see how this works because I haven't played with this yet and I'm kind of curious like how well so you could go through and like, you know, the hand close versus open thing, the oh, close versus open. Um, you could probably do that and then um, just tag them right in here without having to go to the custom vision. Oh my gosh, this dog is so cute. Look at this dog. Let's mm -hmm. use this one. 
I'm an animal lover. So, I mean, all dogs are adorable, but like this one just looks so happy. Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna put it in front here. I'm gonna take photo, see if I'm, how well I do. You know, I went to University of Washington, so I'm like a big Husky fan. If you had a Husky, that would make me so happy. Should we should we look for a Husky? Let's look for a Husky. I have a really funny story about Huskies. I don't know, maybe I'm gonna save it though. So I'll save it for later. Okay. Let's get a Husky too. So then we'll have two images. I have no idea if I'm holding this right, but we'll see when I get it. Um, okay. It's not there. Oh, open project in custom vision. Okay. So is this going to show in my untagged images? That would be cool. Yes. Awesome. Okay. That is really neat. So you can take photos right there and then it's going to put them into your custom vision that we just created. So this is that project that we created through the UI. Um, and then we can um, add them. So we don't have any tags yet. So let's add a tag. We'll have a cat and we have a dog. Um, and so now I should be able to say this is a dog um, and same with this. I'm gonna say this is a dog. Now we'll save, we'll get more images. Um, I'm gonna refresh this so we can see those changes. We need some cats. <laughs> we will. So I'll show you how we're going to get those images in a second. I have an image scraper app, which we can use a different cognitive service to scrape all of our images from Bing um, and filter by license. So we don't use images that um, aren't licensed for use. Um, but it makes it really easy to do custom vision without having to go through and like manually do all this. So I'm going to show you that way. But I wanted to try out this feature. So then next, evaluate and deploy. OK, so you could go through and create this whole thing here. But we don't have any models to deploy yet, right? Because we haven't built our model. Um, so let's go back to our portal. Because I want to see if my bird model deployed. OK, so we can see that. Oops, I want to go devices. Oh, and now you can see we have both of our custom vision projects here. I'm going to go to devices. I'm going to go to the percept, and then I'm going to go to vision, view stream. Oh, wait, I had the stream up, didn't I? It still says loading. Maybe the new one. Ah, OK, it's up. So for some reason, it thinks this is a blue jay. I was trying to like be a bird like before, and I'm like, can it? I want to know what kind of bird I is. But no matter what, it says I'm a blue jay. So we're going to have to default to some images here on by searching. So the the only model, let me go back to this one. The only um, tags we have classified are um, the ones that I've uploaded. And it's obviously not an extensive list. So it's only going to know these birds. It will always guess one of these birds, which is another thing to note about AI. Um, it will always guess something, whether it knows what it is or not. And so we have to use one of these because those are the ones that it's trained on, the ones that it understands. So here's the original image I had. Oh, let's get back to the web stream. And it's a blue jay. Although, wait, that's cheating because it always thinks blue jay here. We got to do a different one. I forgot. See, it's still a blue jay. <laughs> got to keep me honest here, people. Call me out on that one. Okay. Let's do a morning dove. Or is it? No, it thinks oh, it's a husband. Husband. Oh, it's there. It is. There it is. It's going before. It's kind of confused. Nice. It's closer. Now it's it's yeah. sure. so it's probably kind of how I'm holding it. Um, let's see. What were some of the other ones that we had on this? Uh, So the thing I thought would be cool with this one is putting it at your bird feeder and then like notifying you what kind of like birds are there. Um, I, I was actually that, thinking, I was yeah. wondering like if the percept is uh, like outdoor proof, like weatherproof, rust proof. 
I don't think it is out of the box. You would have to put it in something because like these are open ports, like there's no way it's it's weatherproof the way it is now. Uh, but you could put it on a different um, 8020 mount and you could put it in a weatherproof box, but you'd mm -hmm. still have to have power somehow. So maybe you could have a solar power source um, in the box or something that would, um, but yeah. So if you wanted to weatherproof it, you that's something that you'd have to figure out. My bird feeder's right outside my window. So I could put it like inside basically on the window, which is probably where um, this is gonna end up, <laughs> to be honest. Um, let's see, what other birds should we do? Oops. Anyone? If a bird is a chicken or a chicken, wait, what? I don't know if you were a bird or a chicken. I don't know what that means, but I think um, they're talking about if a chicken is a bird. Well, so we didn't classify chickens, although you could. And you know, you really could add other things. Like for example, there's like a lot of deer that hang out in my neighborhood too, because I'm in Minnesota. We got lots of deer. <laughs> and so like, I actually think it'd be fun to just have like a, a wildlife camera and sure you could yeah. have different birds, but also have whatever other wildlife shows up kind of in your, in your things. I like to know when the deer are there because there are baby deer that are hanging out right now and they're adorable and they like jump around like little puppies. Like they play because there's like a big field and they just like play and it's it's quite adorable. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. You could even use those images to train it, right? Like just go through the footage and select a few images and say, hey, train it with these. Yeah, so I could train and actually it would probably be better for the model if I used that feature that it was like take so many images per mm -hmm. second to get training data. So I could put it in my window and I could say, yeah, collect my training data and have it just go and take so many images like per, per second, per day or whatever. And then I could go and it'll post those to custom vision just like we saw with like the ones that we just took. You can do that automatically. And then you can take those images and then classify them and then train the model on that. So I think to get it to perform well for like my scenario for if I want my bird feeder and whatever like wildlife, I'll call it like Cassie's wildlife model. <laughs> like in that one, uh, I could, I could um, create my own training data, which I probably would want to. So that actually is a really good point that that's what that probably what that is really for when we were creating that custom vision or that project. And it was like automatically create your data set versus like manually take the photos like we did just to try it out. I wonder if you could do like this, like uh, use one of the models that comes out of the box, like the image detection one that mm -hmm. detects a bird. And then whenever it detects a bird, it takes a photo and it saves it into a, a directory. And then that becomes your training data for the transfer model for the custom vision bird project, right? That is a really good idea. So like do a multi-model thing. So like first deploy a model that's like, just let me know what type of animal is out there and then classify right. it to get, my, to get my data set. I love that. Right. And Maybe I think next week. What's that? <laughs> Maybe next week. <laughs> yeah. I just going to throw it together. <laughs> Well, with this, I mean, you saw how quickly, I mean, well, actually, we haven't created it. You'll see how quickly you can create a model with this. So, like, I could easily create a model um, the way that we're going to do this cat versus dog, which we should do. Okay, I'm going to do one more bird, and then I'm going to show you how we're going to create this next one. And then you'll see how quickly I actually could um, create American Robin, 100%. Woo! So, it's performing pretty well on the birds that it knows. Let's try a chicken just because somebody said it in there. Let's see what kind of bird the chicken shows up as. Her one. Okay. Let's see. It's a oh, all like okay here. They're all like cooked chickens. That's really kind of morbid. All right. Let's see what this one. No detection. It's either <laughs> yeah. So it actually you can tell that it's confused because it's like I don't actually know what this is. Right. Although it's getting a little bit more confident in the house sparrow. Yeah. So so that's interesting. And and so when you would have that data set uh, or when it would come back um, in that untagged data, then you could say. Oh, this is a chicken. You could create a new class and put it there, and then you can then handle that retraining and of your model and continue to have more scenarios. Well, there's a few questions uh, that yeah. maybe this is a good time. So, uh, first, do you know if there's any way to have the system system learn the errors so that we can correct uh, as we get errors, so then we can correct them, correct the model, and then we'll get better learning in the future. Yeah. So if we go. I wonder if that one's posting back. So basically when it posts to the API an image, um, they end up here in the untagged and then you can tell it what it is and then retrain with that. 
So does, does that answer the question? Is that what you yeah. mean? Like, how do I take? Yeah. Um, That's exactly so you, what I would have answered. That's what I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So you, it's it's on you and actually setting up retraining pipelines are something that people like if you're doing um, custom model deployment and building everything from scratch, that's something that's still they're still, I think, figuring out like there's different ways to do it. And I can speak to one of the ways that I've done it um, at a past company where we had a production model to um, classify um, components. And basically we had a, a to get a training set. We had a UI where a human would go in and say we built one custom and would either confirm and say yes use for training confirm and not use for training because if it was like an image that technically it was that item but it wasn't a very good example i didn't want to use it for training so, but i wanted to know what it was and then um there was a not right and then you could tell it what it actually was and so basically that's what this custom vision does for you already um but that was one way you did it and then you would set up um you know through ml ops things for retraining if you were going like the custom route here I believe there's there's ways, well, I know that you can get the images here and then classify them, but I think there's also ways where you can set up pipelines with custom vision. I've never tried that though, but I, I think there is a way to automate retraining with custom vision. Mm -hmm. But that's another fun thing to try. Yeah. Another, also another question about how much time does it take to train? It's actually pretty fast, yeah. right? Super fast. Yeah, if you do transfer learning, it's really fast. It's because the original model that's there, it took a long time to train because it was probably trained on some really large image data set. But if you just add another 100 photos, let's say that you took of birds or whatever on top of it, then the additional training for the transfer learning is really fast. And that's why transfer learning is so cool, right? Because only a handful of <laughs> companies have the money to train these big models, but then we can all take advantage of that by adding our own data on top of them. Yeah, exactly. So that's the other thing is a good point about um, computer vision and transfer learning to point out is you can get a lot better results with less images. Um, and that's why uh, transfer learning has become basically like a standard with computer vision. And there's these different pre-built ones like ResNet is a popular one. Um, what's the other, other ones I'm kind of Linking, oh. but basically they're, they're pre-built models that you add as a layer in your neural network. Um, and then, do you know what the other ones are called? I, I'm thinking of his ResNet right now. Oh, I, I don't know. So Anamika is actually saying uh, that she's asking how much time it would take to learn the technology, not to train a model. I, I misunderstood her question. Um, oh. to, to learn, actually, I think that uh, a week ago I knew nothing about Percept. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about Cassie, but I think mm -hmm. She probably knew very little about Percept. So if you already yeah. have some basics on, on, if you know the basics of machine learning, I, I don't think it would take you very long to, to just start playing with a Percept. I think it's, it's more like a fun toy than it is a project. Uh, how, yeah. how, how long would it take uh, to learn machine learning? Well, that, that's, I, I don't know exactly what you mean by how long it would take to learn. If it's machine learning, then that's, that's a different story, right? Then it takes a little longer. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of layers that we're talking about here. It's like, okay, how do I learn the, the, the AI side, like building the models? And then how do I learn the Azure Percept? And I'll say, because I have a base knowledge and all that, I can pick things up like this really quick. Like I got this device um, in private preview, but I didn't really play with it much. And it took me about a week to probably get up to speed on it and like have something working um, and deployed. Well, no, actually it probably didn't take me a week. It probably took me a couple days to be honest, but I, cause I wasn't working full days on it either. Now, when it comes to learning machine learning with cognitive services, you don't have to understand machine learning. It's good to have an understanding, like at least of what, what it can do. So to mitigate like for ethical reasons, right? But for the whole point of cognitive services is you don't have to understand how to build a neural network and use a neural network. You can just use these out of the box solutions. And the, the other thing about what I think the Azure Percept makes a lot easier is it's also like, it's just out of the box works. Like I don't have to get my device you know, I don't have to find a project box. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one too. <laughs> I'll get the right one eventually. Here we go. Um, like if you're going this route, you're gonna have to learn, um, you know, how to use these. This one doesn't have, you're gonna have to image it. I guess that's probably, you're gonna have to figure out how to power it, connect it. You're gonna have to mount this. You're gonna need a box, right? So they're all different varying degrees of learning depending on how like deep you wanna go. But if you just wanna be like, I just wanna put something up, 
and I don't want to dig in deep on how to do this, that's where I think this really shines. And also because it for commercialized solutions, it's really seamless. <laughs> like um, you don't have to set up your own pipeline. So it really depends on how much you want to learn. But if you want to use pre-built models like cognitive services and something like the Azure Percept, I think it would take you a few days to a week at max, in my opinion, to learn what you need to learn about custom vision or about any any of the pre-built cognitive services, get it up and running and deploy to it. Like, I was shocked yeah. at how simple it was. Does that sound I right? Agree. Yeah, I completely agree. I actually think that's going to be the future of machine learning. You know, I think there's like a few pioneers that are like really into like all the statistics and all the like the different topologies and all the different like the details. And that's very valuable at the beginning because then we need some people to kind of build this, these models so that everybody else can use. Uh, but I think that now that we're, we're starting to have solutions like cognitive services where you don't actually need to know the details, you just need to know how to use them. I think we're gonna see a lot of people using them like that in the future. Just having the, the kind of the surface knowledge of what you can do, you can create a model, you can train it, then you can do inference. And, and with that knowledge, then you can do a ton, right? Yep, that is so true. I see that too, because like there's just so many things that work out of the box, like why, even though I know how to build a custom vision model, like my own computer vision model with transfer learning, it's easy. It's so easy to do this. And I've actually written scripts to scrape my images and to upload and create my um, custom vision project so it can do it really quickly, um, which is available in the learn module for the classified birds. So if you actually want to build this particular model, um, hmm. learn uh, classify bird species. This is a learn module to learn um, how to build this exact model that we're looking at right now. Um, yeah. that I wrote and you can go in here and it shows you both how to automatically upload with a script and then also how to train and how to use custom vision. Um, and it goes into a little bit about what machine learning is. So I would say this would be a good a good place to start um, if you're inspired by this model and by custom vision, um, you could go through this. There's also documentation for in the Azure Percept as well. Documentation, if I can find that again. I have so I should really post things. <laughs> Where's the Azure Percept doc? Azure Percept, Percept overview. But yeah, the, the tutorials in here. So this is like if I were to get this device and be like, I want to build something with custom vision and that I would go here first. But if you just want to play with um, the custom vision, uh, you can do that through the learn modules and learning the learning platform is completely free by the way and it even sets up a um, sandboxed uh, azure so you don't even have to create an azure account to go through it if you don't want to it just well then your resource will be gone after two hours because you did it in the sandbox environment but if you just want to try it out and go through the tutorial there's tons of them in the microsoft learning platform um, but you can do that without even having to create your own subscription but if you want it to persist you need to create your own subscription and go through that yeah and the cool thing about doing the the learning module for the birds classification is that you don't need to have a percept for that right you could just that's something you mm -hmm. can do today just go there play with it you just need to it just uses cognitive services you don't need to know any of the details of machine learning but you see it work you see you see the, the, the result which is very cool and then if you get inspired by that then you can start digging deeper into the different pieces and learning more details Exactly. And so I, I think if you go into like the IoT side of the docs, this shows you um, how you can do it with a different board um, too. Mm -hmm. So setting up your container using, you know, VS Code. Um, oh, it looks like it even has uh, some sample code for you to use. Um, looks like it's using Docker. Oh, that's the other cool thing about computer vision. You can export. Um, you can export your model and put it into like uh, JS format and do inferencing on the client side too with uh, web. So, mm -hmm. so okay. uh, Anamika is also asking what kind of languages can we use apart from Python? I would say R is also a very popular language uh, in general for machine learning. But I would say that Python may be I don't actually don't know. I don't know what the numbers are, but I, I see more people around me using Python than R. I think there's more community around it um, and more resources around Python. And um, mm -hmm. 
yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Also, so, so another ahead. question is what kind of models can you use with a Percept microphone? Okay, so we haven't got there yet, but I will go there in the docs because there I'm excited and that part I have not played with at all. Uh, so I am really, so they have this deploy no code speech. If we have time, we'll get to this today. If not, we'll do it next week uh, because I definitely want to play with the, uh, the audio one. But basically uh, it has these pre-built in voice assistants. So like when you go and you try it out, like I've, I've only looked at this, I haven't done it, but it looks like you can have a particular type of um, like template for your, your voice AI. Um, and it looks like there's hospitality, healthcare, automotive, and inventory. Um, so those are going to basically be like pre-built pre -built models that you can just select and deploy and use on it. Um, if I go down, so you would like select it, you'd create it. Um, and then I think you can even like customize it too. So for the, the hospitality one, it's saying, you know, like things that you would probably tell in Alexa, you could do that. Um, but there's, you can also add custom ones as well. And you can use something called Lewis.ai, which is our, um, is that right? Is it? Yeah, okay. Um, this is the, like, kind of like the custom vision for natural language processing, where it allows you to create language models through a UI, you create different in, um, utterances, and then it classifies what the intent would be, um, and then gives back a result for that. And this you can create on anything, like on whatever, whatever you want to classify and you go through and you, you set it all up through UI and then you can deploy that to just like we did the custom vision. You can allegedly, I haven't tried it yet, like I said, but allegedly you can do it the same way where you just like create the model and like deploy it to the device without um, writing code. There's one more question for you, Cassie. Um, uh, Jose, is that how you pronounce your name? Is asking, uh, how, uh, like, what do you know of a catalog for deep learning to, uh, topologies other than model zoo dot, uh, co? Um, I'm not sure if I follow, like, how to build different types of deep learning. Sure of what? Uh, I would imagine that it would be, like, how to build different, uh, uh, like, the structure of different neural networks or deep learning networks. Oh, like how, like the different layer configurations and like hyperparameters and like that. Right. That's what I would. That's what I understand. Yes. Um. Is that correct? I, yeah, I don't know of a good like resource other than going to like the PyTorch. Well, there's PyTorch yes. Learn the Basics if you're like brand new. If you're looking for more of a, if you're looking for more of a. Uh, like advanced tutorial. I, I think most of that's just experience in my opinion, like I learn by doing. And so I like these types of tutorials to get started um, and un start understanding the basics of deep learning. So like what are tensors? That's something you need to understand if you're gonna start building machine learning models and, and how do they work and how, why are they important, that kind of stuff. And then going into the actual like building the model in here, it's gonna talk about how you construct, you know, the model neural network class and the different types of layers and the activation functions. It's gonna go into that here as kind of like an intro. So if you just wanna get an intro, that's where I would go. But then as far as like advanced um, in machine learning, I think it's it's trial and error and experience and building and learning as you go. Um, I know there's other good like blogs out there. So I just like, when I wanna learn something new, I just look, Google, I, Google with Bing. <laughs> Right? Did I say that right that time? <laughs> Google thing, and I try to find what other people have done and learn from that. So I, I actually, hope I actually just went to modelzoo.co to understand uh, the question a little bit better. So it's a website that contains uh, a bunch of pre-trained models that you can use. So that's oh. really cool. Yeah, what I actually cool? didn't even know models. about it. Modelzoo.co. Oh, okay. Model. So what he put in there, model zoo? Model zoo. Okay. Uh, like z o o dot c o yeah dot c o that didn't I'm just gonna model you see model zoo dot dev is that different uh I'm in model zoo dot c o oh there that one yeah. I don't know why oh they might not have a redirect for http I bet that's what it is mm-hmm Okay, so um, 
This is cool. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Nothing. Oh. I agree, it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like, if you wanna build a custom solution and you wanna use a model that somebody else has already built, is that what this is? I think that's it, yeah. You have a pre-trained model that you can use transfer learning on, kind of what we we're talking about, right? Yeah. Or, or just use the model. You could just use the model as is, right? If it's already trained yeah. and it does what you want to do, maybe you don't need to to train it further. Are well, these just free to use? Like they're just, just open source? Some, yeah, we just learned something with a question that we couldn't answer. <laughs> that's, that's why these are great. That's why the live shows are great, is you get to learn more yeah. as you go. I think there's one that can for my wildlife in here. Oh, that's this cool. Again, so not this one, this is gonna change images, but maybe I can find one for my uh, for my wildlife one. Sorry, we don't know of any other site. Oh yeah, I don't. I didn't even know of this <laughs> one, so yeah. thank you. Cool. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go back a little bit. If I don't know that we're gonna have time for audio today, but we will get to that next week, which um, if we don't today. Uh, so let's close some of this out. And then let's look at, so I was gonna show you how I built the um, custom vision model. I was actually gonna go through uh, a process because I, I think it's really fun um, to see it work and to see how long it takes to train. Like we had a question around that. And then also there is this app that I built um, because I'm lazy like all good developers are and I don't like to do things manually. Um, there is a solution that I built that will use Bing Search. So Bing Search is a cognitive service that I've already built here. And what this does is it's a search API. In fact, let's go to the docs. Okay? Um, and it can do lots of things. I'm only using it for a very simple use case. Let's see, compare to... So here's all the different things it can do. It can do entity search, image search, news, video, visual. Um, so you can search all kinds of things um, and scrape different data that you might need using this service. I want images. So I created this service in Azure right here. And then I have this Node app that um, uses that service that I just created. And I just pass in whatever tags I want and it's going to use that service to scrape a data set for me that I can use to now train with custom vision. Um, and this is in my GitHub, so is under Cassie View. So like same as my Twitter handle, Cassie View, and it's just called Image Scraper and Custom Vision Magic. That's apparently what I called it. I wrote this a while ago, <laughs> I forgot I called it that. Anyways, okay, so basically what you do is like, I want dog and cat images, right? So I already updated my search term list. Um, and then I have a for each, and if I jump into, F12, there we go, I wanna go here. So save and search images. I pass in my, my search term, I create my web request, um, and I have this filter, which is going to filter by license, so I'm not using images that I shouldn't be using, which is important. Um, and then I'm going to create directories for test and train, and from there, it's gonna download and it's gonna mod 30. So I'm gonna get 30% for training and testing. So it's gonna actually uh, put my images into train and test folders. And um, that way, um, cause you don't wanna test with your uh, images you use to train it cause you'll get false, really good results. Uh, basically it kind of memorizes the data you give it. So if you test with the same stuff that you trained with it's gonna look like it's performing really, really well. And then you're gonna put it into production and it might not perform that well and then you're gonna be sad. So make sure you test with unseen data. So I'm gonna just gonna run this by running um, Node. And so this is going to um, grab those and it's gonna save those. So I actually should have showed you my, hang on, let me get my folder up here. Um, but you can see it already scraped the data set in the console here. And if I go to... I'd love to see the code where you um, make sure that you don't get, like say you look at the license. Uh, how do you do that? Like do you only take photos that have a permissive license specifically? Yeah. yeah, so this filter 
um, right here. This is the filter and I added on to the web request and that's how I filter the images. And I got that just by going to Bing and using their own search filters and then grabbing the query string and appending it to my request. I see, okay. Um, I'm trying to find where this is. So image scraper, I created this images folder and then I have my dogs in my train. So we can see that I got some images here. Now I did not page results. If you want more results than this, you can do page results and get more. This one doesn't do that. And then we can see that I have some test images in here too. Um, and then if we go to the cat images, we got the same thing here, right? So we can see that we got some images. So that just makes it quick to get a data set. And then now we're gonna go back to our custom vision here and we're gonna add images. And we can go to this one, image scraper, images, dog, train. I see a husky. Cat. Yeah. And this is a cat. So <laughs> we're going to just delete that one. Oops. Or actually, let's keep it and add it to the cat images. Maybe it's a cat who thinks it is a dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic so maybe we, we, we should leave them there that's going to add model confusion it's all about how you feel inside right <laughs> that's true and my my dog thinks she's a cat sometimes maybe she so is a cat maybe she is maybe. okay and then let's add my cat images from my training model uh, and we're going to take them as cats so you can see this was like really quick to grab images, upload, and train to get a base data set um, using the Bing search. Um, you can do as many tags as you want to. Um, and then, like I said, you just have to add paging if you want more results. But this should be enough, I think, to get a good result. And then once we have them, so let's look at our our cat that thinks it's a dog. Oh, wait. Oh, maybe, maybe it is a dog. Maybe a dog. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay. Oh, that's a wild dog. Like a, Which one? Like, uh... Ooh, look at his face. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that one. That one that is spotty. It's like a... Oh. A safari type wild dog. Yeah. I think. I think. I have not seen that breed. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Um, And then our cats. <laughs> They're so cute. Look at those eyes. Okay, so... We, I mean, we could just spend the rest of the time looking at cute cat and dog images. Okay, let's train it. We're gonna train our model. We're gonna do a quick train. And we're gonna see how quick the training is. Yes, now we can see. Yeah. It, is, it is pretty fast. And we don't have that many images, but we probably won't need that many for this type of model. We'll see. Are you thinking of a hyena because the size of the ears? Maybe, it kind of did look like a hyena, but I think hyenas are even like, I think it's a wild dog. Search for wild dog. It kind of did look like that. You know, Search so. for wild, Search wild for dog. Wild dog, yeah. Oh, that. you were right. I have never seen that. So what yeah. is a African wild dog? Yeah, I saw them in South Africa. That's it's they're like, really cool looking. Are they nice? Rare. Rare. They're super hard to see. Oh. Are they like domesticated though, or are they like literally no, no. wild? No, okay. they're literally wild. Well, they'll eat you alive if you get off the jeep. Kind of wild. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we have wild turkeys here, but no wild dogs. <laughs> okay. okay, let's go. Did we? Where is my custom vision training? Still training. Um, so we should have timed it, but it's only probably been a few minutes. Yeah. Yeah, when we say it's fast, it's all relative, right? Like there's machine learning models that take days to train. This is not one of them. <laughs> this is something we can do in an AI live show. Yes. Well, okay. I need some like Jeopardy music right now, don't I? Like do 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 do. Or I can um uh, probably not seeing. I don't have the ukulele. Let's see. Where is my custom vision? That's the wrong one. 
Here's the right one, still training. It's usually faster than this, I feel like. But still, I mean, considering how long models can take to train, like on the size and what you're doing, um, it's pretty fast. And I think there's different ways to optimize. I don't know if you optimize for accuracy, because I think you can optimize for being quicker or something. I think I saw some check there, I don't know. Um, I think I did do the quick training. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. That's okay. Although we might have to wait, should I put the AI, the AI show music up again? <laughs> we get to dance. Yeah, we, then we can do that. Wait, do I still have it up? I do. I do. Oh, we could look at dogs and cats. See. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have the graphics, so I don't have all the cool, like, soundboard stuff. All I have is, you can do some cool stuff, let's see. That's all I got. <laughs> I need to get one with the uh, show graphic. Okay, so I have a funny story to tell, actually, while we wait for this to train. So um, as part of, like, when we went to events, we would go to hackathons, and we went to one where they were training a computer vision model. And um, they they were one of the winners and they were doing um, like species of dogs. And basically when they went up to do like their presentation, um, they said they, they found out that it was fun to see what type of dog they were because AI will always um, predict something, right? Like it thinks my background's a blue jay. So it will always kind of predict something based on what it sees. And so people started like yelling out different, um, different names that, of like famous people that should be um, classified. So someone yells, Bill Gates, we want to know what kind of dog Bill Gates is. And they go to start where they go to images and they grab a picture of Bill Gates and someone behind me goes, he's a husky. And <laughs> they went through the training or they put him through the, the inferencing and it turns out Bill Gates is a husky. So it's good you're so fond of, of huskies because <laughs> and every, everybody just started laughing and <gasps> Um, somebody said Bezos, but nobody dared do that one. So. <laughs> and there was so, there were some guesses on on that too. So it was pretty entertaining though, because it was like everybody was laughing or like just yelling out different random names of of like what what type of dog are you? So I feel like that should be like a site because I I don't know. I wonder what kind of dog I would be. Yeah, <laughs> that's that pretty funny. And so when you were talking about huskies, I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta tell that story later. Yeah. What kind there, of dog a, uh, Yeah, so the husky is the mascot of the University of Washington. So I have like a, a oh. yeah, and both my husband and I went to UW. So we have like little mascot stuffed toys in our office that we look at every day, whole day. <laughs> That's awesome. Keeps, keeps me productive and inspired. Yeah. Fantastic. My desk is just like a disaster. Like I, I'm having my camera very specifically just right here. So you cannot see like the disaster that is happening. Like, cause I have so many different, okay, while we're waiting, I'll give you a little, let me go full screen here. Oh, it just trained. Oh, I guess you don't get to see my messy desk. Almost. Um, we want to see your messy desk. <laughs> can you train again? We have time at the end. Okay. Um, okay. So what did that take for training? Like five minutes maybe? I think it was about five minutes. How many images were you training? Were you doing transfer? Training? There was about 20, 20, a little over 20 for each. Let's see, we can scroll down. Um, so they recommend, okay, this is good to know. They recommend having at least uh, 50 images. So we'll see, we can do a quick test. Um, and this will allow us to browse to our test images and see how it does. It's 100% cat, so nice. That's it. Okay, let's try some other ones. Let's go to dog. Oops, let's train. It's really thinking on this one. Dog, 100%. Okay, so I mean, it seems like it's going pretty well. Um, you can also, so I just want to show you quick on, so when you publish this, um, you get a prediction URL. And that prediction URL is what you can use 
um, multiple ways. And then also then you can export it if you do the compact model, which is just a smaller version. So now that we have this, let's deploy it to our Azure Perceptive. So if we go back to our IoT hub, or not our IoT hub, we want to go to our um, stuff here. We're going to go to computer devices. We're going to go to uh, vision deploy project. Now we should have, okay, good. We have cat versus dog and we have our first generation. We are going to deploy this model. It's deploying. Deployed. Okay, awesome. Let's open up the stream. Now remember, it's going to take a minute to load in that model um, once it's deployed. So we'll give it a minute to do that. And then um, my, my, my husband and my lovely assistant, Dan, he's going to bring my Chihuahua to me so that we can test it on Sophie and see if she is really a dog or a cat. So. Here comes Dan. Oh, my, my Australian Shepherd wants in too. <laughs> nice. You want to say hi? This is my lovely assistant. Hi. <laughs> and this is my Chihuahua. Okay, so we're still loading. She is so cute. Oh my goodness. She's adorable. Thank you. I'm a proud so mom. Cute. But you see how she could be kind of like a cat sometimes too, right? Like, yeah. okay, so let's see. Yeah. Oh, she's a dog. There Sophie, you go. Look at you have to see your truth. Okay, no, I'm <laughs> you can be whatever you want to be. I promise. Okay. So we'll put her down. <laughs> let her go. <laughs> oh, she wants out. Hang on, I gotta let her out. Do you say you have a German Shepherd? Um, I have an Australian Shepherd. He's a little bit harder to pick up. <laughs> but I, I need to do some more weightlifting before I get to that level. Um, let's pull up some other dogs, though. What kind of dogs should we look up? Should we look up a Husky since we've been talking about that? Yeah. yeah, we should. Okay. We should look at Husky. Oh, look at how cute. I just, like, I just want like all of the dogs. So yeah, that, that's a dog. Let's try a cat. Let's do a cat. So you can see how quickly you can prototype and have something working with this device. Like it's just the the amount of work to do it um, manually, which if you're into that, by all means. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. We're a cat. Uh, yeah, that is adorable. Look at those green eyes. Oh, uh, I feel like I can almost pet it. Wait, can I? There you go. Oh, good kitty. <laughs> <laughs> what is a, a Belgian Malamar? I don't okay, let's look it up. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds awesome. Uh, oops. Get to the images. Oh, that's a cool. Kind of looks like a, a German Shepherd. Hmm. Yep, it's a dog. Dog. It is very sure. So that is custom vision on the Azure Percept and a quick way to get a model working. Nice. We might have time to get to get into the the, the audio. The audio. Yeah. Great. I think we will. Um, the only other, I think that was everything with custom vision. Oh, there was something I wanted to show quick before. Um, let me see here. So the other thing, because before we do speech, we have to upgrade. This upgrades over the air, and I'm upgrading my device. I just upgraded it. That's how you upgrade it. <laughs> I just couldn't believe I would do that. I'm like, oh, I just click a button. Nope, and it's done. Awesome. <laughs> uh, so there was, I think it was in the docs. I got to find it now. There was this... Um, this is probably that capture image thing that we were looking at. Yeah, so after you create it, you can go back and say, I want to capture one frame every two hours. 
um, one frame every 10 seconds. So you could create a data set. Um, what's target? Total number, of, oh, for capture. Oh, that's cool. So if you wanna do 12 or 25 images every hour, you can do that and curate a data set really quick. Um, what's this? Only capture images when a certain tag is probably, oh, that's cool. So you could train it and say, I don't wanna just always capture. I wanna capture when I think a dog is there or when like maybe you need more images of a particular scenario, then you can add that in here. And then you can choose the probability of like how, how confident um, you want the score to be in order to capture that image, so. That's really cool. Then my idea from before, it does not need two models. You don't need a model to first capture when you see a dog and then another model to, to uh, classify the dogs. You're right. But all I need to here. They thought of everything. They're making this way too easy. Like we're gonna have to find the jobs. Like this is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just kidding. Okay. Uh, we still need someone to build these models, right? So we're good. <laughs> yeah, somebody who knows how to click a few buttons. Right. <laughs> the buttons really, really well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, these are the other. Um, sample models too. So like if we wanted to go back to our generic um, object detection, you could do that. I haven't tried any of these other ones. Identify people. Like I'm wondering, should we try that? Should we try any of these or should we go on to audio? I'll let I let you all decide. What, what should we do? Should we... Let people decide. What do you guys yeah. think? Uh, Wait, I need the music back on. I need to get a sound, a cool soundboard like Seth has because <laughs> That's it. Then you can just push the button and it's like, doo doo doo. Yeah, I know. I gotta like open up my phone and now it doesn't want to get out of the dog pictures because why would you? Because they're adorable. So Sherry's saying keep doing with what you're doing. All right, Sherry. Okay. Let's try this people detection because I don't even know what this one actually does. <laughs> like, is it, because we already found out that I'm kind of a person for object detection. <laughs> Um, let's see, what is this? Is it gonna give me more details? I'm still a person. Maybe we should like Google it or Google a thing. You know what else might be interesting to look at the telemetry data on this one? Um, I think I Sophie wants in. <laughs> you hear her barking? Yeah. She's like, I got my five minutes of fame and I, I have more to say. Yeah. <laughs> Where did I find the telemetry? Was it here? I lost it. There it is. View live telemetry. Okay. Let's see if this is giving us different information. It's not really giving me anything else. I wonder if I have to customize this one somehow. Is there, let's look at what people, I feel like this would be like who somebody is. So maybe Let's look up what people detection is. Maybe this is in the docs. So let's start. When in doubt, docs, right? Um, Azure Percept Overview. Let's look here and see if it has info on some of these other vision models. I think in the quick start, didn't it have something that was talking about the One of these has like the different pre-built ones. Create a vision prototype. I don't think we tried that one. Oh, that's a custom vision prototype. So that, that is what we did. Never mind. That's the custom vision one. Oh, this is how it shows how you can tag your own images if you're um, mm -hmm. using that built-in um, capture image. Mm -hmm. Deploy. Maybe it doesn't have anything about the other pre-built models. Or maybe the model is still loading. No. I feel like I would have to custom train it on um, who, who people are, right? Like it would be like a transfer learning situation. Yeah, right. Um, see if it gives me anything else. 
Yeah, so I don't know. It, and this is still in preview, so it's possible that there's a bug with it. This, right. this just went public preview. So that would be something I can bring back and ask about. So let's try another one, since that one doesn't seem to. Let's try vehicle detection. We, maybe I can find out what kind of car I am. <laughs> OK. <laughs> what kind of car do you think you are? <laughs> I have no idea. Oh, it's loading. You know, the other one didn't say loading. I wonder if it failed on load somehow. Because it's yeah, that could be saying that it's loading. Looking at some of the questions. Okay, I think it's loaded. Okay. All right. So, am I a car? I'm not a car. Let's see if we, let's pull one up on my phone and see, see what it says. What kind of car should we look up? I don't know. Let's just look up convertible. Let's look at a convertible. See what comes up. I don't even know what kind. I guess I should probably know what kind of car it is when I use it. Let's see. <laughs> a bus. A bus. Oh, my phone is a bus. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. Yeah. And that is a car. Oh, yep. so I think it's like car, bus. Um, so like maybe those are the classes. Then it's not like the make it. I was thinking it's going to be like the make of the car. Right, right. Um, so let's look up a truck then. See if it does different there. I'm wondering what the like use case for this model would be. Like what would I want to know the type of car? Um, I guess if you were if you were doing like uh, autonomous stuff, like autonomous driving things, maybe I could see that used for toll tolls um, because sometimes I know that's not the case in the U.S., but in Europe, often uh, uh, SUVs pay more in the tolls. So when you drive through, uh, it could be oh. useful to detect, oh, this is a, a bigger, you know, more polluting car. Therefore, we're going to charge it double. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that i guess yeah that's a good point like i need i just need to know the size of the vehicle because you know it costs more for more um um maybe things cars that are worse for the environment or something okay so yeah. bw bus let's look at that one well this is like a futuristic vw this is a 2021 buzz cargo okay you'll see this one i put out this is a really interesting looking one It's like the future and the past have come together and created yeah. this. Interesting. So it's a man. I feel like really close though. When it's further back, it's like it can't see. As oh, much. it still says a car. It says it's a car, but this one yeah. would be classified as a van. Right, right, right. So you have to get like really close. So that'd be something to consider with your models um, the distance that you're taking images or cropping. That's actually, that's something I don't think was covered in this. Uh, when you take an image, um, doing the bounding box, like if you saw when it was uh, doing that, that's going to kind of, that's going to crop the image for you. Um, or if you were doing manual, you would want to crop your image down to what you care about be it for exactly what we just saw because it wasn't doing it well. Okay, I want to know if I'm a car. <laughs> You're not a car or a bus or a van or a truck. What about, oh, just wait, flashed. did it do it for a second? It just flashed, yeah. No, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what about my card? Will it say this is something? It's a van. Man, clearly it's a van. <laughs> what if I just feel like my hand? I'm a car. Okay. So that's interesting because of the, it, it's like, what is this? Still a car? I don't know what I'm doing with my hand. I'm sorry. That's like really quick. <laughs> okay. We'll stop playing with this one. Let's move on and just pretend like that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> let's see here. What was... Um, what were, were there any other pre-built ones? Vehicle products on a shelf. Let's try this one. I have lots of stuff on my desk that we can see if it can recognize. And then I think we should we should try some of the audio classification because I'm I'm really excited. I have not tried anything with the audio classification yet. Um, so I let me get what's that? I read through the the. The tutorial, and I'm like, I, I want to see this working, right? Because it's just so cool. 
Good it's like your own little, uh, I can't say her name because I have her here and then she'll answer and all oh. the, the, the Amazon uh, yes. person. The name we do not speak. Over there, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, it was it was basically that, which I think I looked at. Whoa, wow. products everywhere. Yeah, my product, kind of. Okay, so let's see. Product. Let's see if I can get my my hand sanitizer. I think this one could be improved. Uh huh. Not really seeing yeah. it do. Oh, now it's it it caught it. Oh, you know what? It's products on shelf. I need the shelf. Um, okay. I don't have a shelf. That makes okay. sense. Because if you look at where it's trying to classify, like it would look like there's a shelf there. Right. So right. this works well. I'm using it wrong. This is user error. Right. And maybe maybe with the person when it was looking for more of a particular background too, which is like, this is good kind of just understanding of how AI works. Like it's trained to do one very like specific thing and it does that. And like, it can't just, you know what I mean? What each model is trained very specifically and it's good at the thing that it's trained to do. But it won't, it will predict things that are outside of that, um, even if it doesn't know. So kind of just a good overall understanding of machine learning and like why it would do that. So when we look at the sample models, I think the general object detection is probably the most useful because that was just like, I can put anything in front of it and it'll give me like a class. Like it might not, it'll tell me it's a bird, but it's not gonna tell me what kind of bird, you know, it'd probably tell me that, you know, it's a dog. Dog might've worked on that one. I hadn't tried that there. I don't know what people detection is supposed to do. Products on shelf, you need an actual shelf. So like, I would think this would be more of a retail scenario where I wanna like take a picture of the shelf and see what products are there and what aren't there. So maybe for like a restocking, like if you wanted to know when you need to restock a shelf, um, that and it could send an alert saying, you know, product empty. And maybe you can even customize this. I don't know if you can customize these, like you can customize vision. So I've never tried that, I don't know. And then vehicle detection, you had a really good scenario there for like if it was a toll bridge or, um, yeah. But then, yeah, so then you can create whatever you want with custom vision and we can deploy and then we can also just revert back to the base model that comes with it, which does a ton on its own. So that's the vision. So let's go to the speech. I'm gonna close this since we're done there. Close this, done with that. Um, actually, that. where did my docs go? I mean, oh, here. Okay. This is what we want. So I, I hope this, you can still see well, I want to do like a split screen here with my, um, studio and the docs. I don't know if that's maybe too, that's too small. I can't do that. Okay. We'll just split between them. Yeah. Also because you're in front of part of the screen, you're in front of. Oh yeah. I can, right. I can switch to no Cassie. That okay. Looks better. But we, we like Cassie. <laughs> oh, this one, we don't really need to see the device right now. We can do this one. That gives you a little bit more um, screen space. I, the stream deck just makes me feel like a witch. Like I can be like abracadabra and then like, wow, oh, and then it changes. <laughs> I feel like magic. All right. So we have 15 minutes. Let's see what we can learn about this. But like I said, two part series. So come hang out with us next week and we will go much more um, deep on the audio side. And I want to look at more of the analytics and um, maybe we'll look at how we could connect to it as well. Because I think that was a good question and I, I want to dig into it, but I think it'll take up more time than we want to do right now. But I think it would be something that would be fun for next week. Okay. So I'm gonna grab a sip of water quick and then come back. Me too. <laughs> Hydrate. This is your, your mm -hmm. reminder during the stream to drink water. <laughs> Get up, stand a little bit, stretch your legs. I'm already standing, so I got that, but but uh all right, we got some water. So to create the voice assistant. See, so we want to go to the studio. We want to look at the demos tutorial and try out voice assistants. So if I go here, I thought I didn't I upgrade this. Is this tab not updated? Unless another upgrade came through. Uh, I can close that too. 
Demos, demos, okay, overview, demos, tutorials, overview, demos, tutorials. Okay, so this is probably a good place to go to if you were trying this out. And then we want to try out voice assistant templates. Here we go. So I'm going to select my device. Which one should we do? Which one looks more interesting? Mm -hmm. Let's let's look at the docs because they kind of had some examples. I think when you scrolled to the hospitality um, one is cool. That's the one I want. Yeah. So like yeah. the turn on off lights and the TV, the automotive. Yeah. I think I wanted that one. Inventory. Okay, so that's interesting though with the computer vision one for the shelves and then the the audio one. You could put this up and then like tell it. Oh, yep, I confirmed that there are, you know, Xboxes, you know, add Xboxes, blah, blah, blah. So you could, like, notify somebody and then use the voice one to add it, um, like an item. That's really cool. Um, okay, but I think you're right. I think hospitality uh, is good. So let's go to hospitality. Let's agree and create. So I want my subscription. I'm gonna to go to, why is my AI show on? Oh, Azure Percept Demo, here we go. Enter resource name, my awesome magical demo. And then it looks like we need, we only have two regions. So remember this is preview. So there's always, oh, and it looks like it's gonna be using Lewis, which means we can probably, um, customize through the Lewis.ai uh, thing. So, and also we can do free or standard. I'm gonna do standard um, just to make, but you could also try this out for free, it looks like. So let's click create, deploying speech themes resource. Let's see. Is it really that easy? Do I just correct, like create and it's gonna can, like I deploy? It. I was looking through that page and I'm like, okay, where's the rest of the tutorial? For real? <laughs> It's what? too easy. And they just play with it, right? I think there's also like ways to customize the wake up board. Um, yeah, I saw that. Interesting. Yeah. Let's go back to. I need to like bookmark this. Um, so the point. So in the speech here. Keywords, commands. So speech template. So that's what's being deployed right now. Let me click into it. I don't want to like break it. It's still deploying. I think that we There's machine learning device. I think we machine learning people are going to be out of a job like pretty soon because this is getting too yeah. easy. Just click a few buttons and boom, magic. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this created the re the hospitality um, one here. And I think that didn't work because I think it was still creating it. Um, so you're right. Okay, so here's my keyword. So my keyword is computer. And I can change that. Although I like computer because I am a big Star Trek TNG fan, <laughs> next generation. And computer just makes me feel like I am the captain of a spaceship. And I like it. So I um, like it. <laughs> I'm with you. Good. <laughs> Cool, custom command. Okay, so this is our, our customized speech module. Now, I wonder if I go back to my portal resource if it's created a Lewis resource for me. Resource group. This is getting, getting a lot of stuff in here. Let's uh, make this a little bit. Speech service. Okay, so it's a speech service that was created. Um, there's an app service plan that was created, a storage account, a key, ah, language understanding. I believe this is my Lewis.ai resource here. Yep. Um, so it is using Lewis, which means we can, that's probably how we're going to customize. So let's go back. Waiting for, wait, is it already working? 
computer, turn on the lights. No, it didn't work. <laughs> so, you know, I thought, I was like, wow, is it really that magical? Maybe we, do. Maybe we still do have a job. Maybe it's not that easy. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Uh, try speaking a command in your message. It says that I should be able to. Okay, that there's a little mute button there. Oh, let me put on the one where you can see my device. So there's like a mute right here. You can see it turns red and then it turns blue. So it's not muted. Um, it looks like it's on. Computer. Hello. Oh my gosh, it worked! Yay. Okay. okay, computer, hello, and it said hello. Okay, so um, oh, and this is it's gonna. Okay, so let's tell it to turn on the lights. I, I'm gonna go over here. Computer, turn on the lights. No, nothing. Let me try. Computer. Turn on the lights. I had to space. Oh, look at that. There, lights turn on. That is so cool. Okay. Um, what were the other ones that it could do? Turn on the TV. Turn on the TV? Okay. Yeah. Computer, turn on the TV. Oh. Nice. <laughs> okay, that was too easy. No. I know, right? No. <laughs> okay. Let's, um, that was supposed to take longer. We still have, we still have like 10 minutes. Okay, but we can play with this for endless. Tur okay, we can turn on, oh, let's close the blinds. Computer, close the blinds. Wait, I don't see blinds. I don't either. Is it maybe behind you in the image? Maybe, I don't know. I feel like it's like to the right over here, but uh -huh. maybe like the, the temperature. It says 70 degrees. Did the temperature change? Oh, I'm just saying like maybe you can tell it to change the temperature. I don't okay. know if that works. Let's see what other, um, what were the other ones again? Abigail. Okay, so I can't make like my own. I have to use one of these, which yeah. there's a reason for that. And it's because um, they want to mitigate the amount of false activations that happen. Um, and I, I think if I remember right, it was something about the, how hard the like syllables were in order to classify it correctly in order. So you don't accidentally, cause you don't want your device to like accidentally wake up, which it does sometimes, right? Like you didn't want to say the word because you know what it, it would happen. But if that happened all the time, right? Um, that would be annoying, right? So that, that was one of the reasons when I was reading about why you can't always just create your own activation word is because you'll have false um, activations. Right. It's from my understanding. I read that a while ago, so I don't know if that's changed. But um, do you know if the processing is happening on the device, like the inference? I know the model, the the model training is happening on Azure. But do you know if the inference is happening on the device or on Azure? It's on. I'm pretty sure it's on the device because if you look at the, if I go back to the data sheet, it has it's optim. The, the board is optimized for AI. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, but I thought I remember reading here that um, there was, I think it was the board itself. That's that the, in the vision or audio, right? This processor, I believe this processor is. In the development kit? Not in, so let's say uh, the vision, let's say if you have a vision inference thing, would that be done in the vision device? Um, no, so it goes to, I think all the processing, because these don't have processors on them. They're God. just microphones and um, and uh, video. Camera. Camera. The processing all is going to happen on the board. So you, you need the board. And the, the default kit just comes with the camera and the board. And I think that's just because probably like computer vision is more like popular. Like it, it, there's a lot, there's a lot more happening in computer vision. Although audio, they're starting to make a lot of really interesting advances in audio. Um, and if you want to learn audio, how audio classification works, there is aka.ms. If you go to learn PyTorch, so this is the learning path for PyTorch fundamentals. So this is um, that learn the basics tutorial that I showed you. You can um, go through and actually run the notebooks in here so you don't have to configure your environment. If you want to try 
getting um, learning like the basics of AI. But if you want to learn how computer vision works, natural language processing, and audio, um, this learning path has it all. Um, and so us advocates, AI advocates, are actually the authors of, of this module as well, or of all, all of them, this learning path. Uh, but it's really cool to go in here and start understanding some of the audio stuff. So we're going to talk about audio more next week because I just think I find it really interesting. But I think one of the reasons that the that kind of went on a tangent there, I think one of the reasons that the camera is more of like a default um, thing is because there's just more people are doing computer vision solutions would be my guess. I don't know. Like, I didn't decide that. So I don't know if that's why they decided it. I'm just making things up, but it sounds right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's I go with it. So I think this processor is optimized for AI, if I remember doing on board. I can find anything about it. I remember seeing something about it. It's an ARM processor. Yeah, power devices requiring graphics. That's powering it though, not like Oh, this has AI acceleration. So maybe the one Intel. Oh, so it has, that's on the vision device. So maybe, I was wrong. maybe there is some sort of, I don't know. I'm not amazing at the, the hardware side of it, but it looks like mm -hmm. it, from what I'm seeing here to me, I would say that, yes, you can do on, it's doing on board, but you can't like you need the, the camera needs the board in order to cook up to the, um, hook up to the IoT hub and in order to uh, be able to um, send back that. So you need the board. Right. Doesn't mean that there might not be some processing that's happening on the camera itself, but. but wait, so this is the data sh sheet for the development kit, right? So. Where, oh, sorry, keep talking. I'm just thinking that this is a data sheet for the, the like the little the third, the third, right? There's an audio and a vision and then another module, right? This is for that one, not for the, I know it says. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. So I don't think yeah. it's in the audio, in the vision one. I think it's in the, the board. One, the yeah. board, I don't know what it's called. Yeah, that one. Vision processing unit and Intel. So yeah, you can get all the specs here on, you know, how good the camera is. Or what's the audio have? Does the audio have onboard processing too then? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't look like the audio one has a processor. So anyways, I do believe that it does some onboard um, things. Now, if you were to use a Raspberry Pi. If we go to the IoT, um, let me go to that doc because in some of the boards, um, they has their sample code on how you would use like a Raspberry Pi with it and it, it had it making an API call out to the service. Um, so it's, like I said, with custom vision, you can download the model and I don't know, not, I don't think in all the custom, custom I don't think in all the cognitive services you can download the model, but um, some of them you can. And in order to deploy and doing onboard processing, it would have to deploy the model. And then you would have to write it to do the inferencing there as well. And then you have to be considering the model has to be much smaller if you're doing, you know, inferencing on board versus um, pushing to the cloud. So, you know, I think I would have to look so, in deeper to see which ones are what. Maybe it makes that kind of um, yeah. decision based on have, the size. Um, yeah. We have two minutes left. So oh, I think we maybe we should get a little deeper in the audio stuff next week. Absolutely, yes. So we have our audio resource created. Um, that's what we'll, we'll come back to this. Um, we will talk more about how to create our own um, customized solutions, because I believe you can take this base model and then customize it however you want using Lewis. So we'll probably talk more about Lewis. We'll talk about some of the other speech um, cognitive services that we have. Uh, we'll go over some probably uh, custom models and um, if we have time to play that. And then I also hopefully I'll have time to play with a little bit the uh, ways that you can interact and grab this stream through either the IoT Hub SDK or through the telemetry, um, creating that service that you could query and then have that that history. So we'll look a little bit more into that. Um, I love it. I can't wait. 
Yeah, thanks so much, uh, B, for hanging out. And um, I think you're, are you coming next week too? I'll come. Yeah, thanks for putting me on the spot with that question. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll, come. I'll come. You guys heard it, so she has to come now because <laughs> she said she would. <laughs> So thanks so much for hanging out um, with us today. This was really fun. This device is just, I'm kind of blown away. Like I'm not even lying, like how, how simple some of these things were. Really cool things that we can build. Um, really cool ways to get started too. Like whether you're gonna go for, you wanna start building models, you wanna start with cognitive services, or you wanna go straight to Raspberry Pi and look at different solutions like hacker boxes and instructables. Um, to start learning. So lots of opportunities to kind of find your path and what you want to learn. So I think we are at time. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.